So now let's draw the Lewis structure for C2H4. All right, we know that the C's are going to have to be in the center, and the H's are going to have to surround those carbons. You want to try to put them as symmetrically as possible. So we'll put our four hydrogens, two on one carbon, and two on the other. And this way, these hydrogens are surrounding those central carbons as symmetrically as possible. And now, let's put in our Lewis dots. Well, we knew that hydrogen is going to have one valence electron. Carbons each have four, and we know what's coming. We're going to connect them. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now, let's connect the valence electrons, so we'll form these covalent bonds. And let's check our work. Carbon has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. It's happy. This carbon has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. It's happy. Each one of those hydrogens has one bond, two valence electrons. They're happy. Now you ask, well, how did you know that you put the hydrogens as symmetric as possible? Let's just see what happens if we didn't. We put two H's there. Let's put three hydrogens around that carbon and then one over here. Now we get stuck. These hydrogens can each form one bond. This hydrogen can form one bond. This carbon can only form four bonds. Remember it cannot expand its octet. You're stuck. Carbon can only form maximum of these four bonds with eight valence electrons so you'd been left over the carbon that only has two four six valence electrons that's not a valid Lewis structure so a good rule of thumb is let's just go ahead and draw it with the hydrogens placed symmetrically about the central carbons so now let's look at a different molecule let's do C H2. Well, we know carbon is going to be the central atoms, and our H's we're going to put symmetrically around the molecule. We know that carbon or hydrogen wants to form one bond. Remember that it has its one valence electron there. This carbon has four valence electrons. This carbon has four valence electrons. So we can see that this carbon framework will be a triple bond, C2H2. And this is the correct Lewis structure for this acetylene or C2H2 molecule. Now let's look at another one, CH2O. All right, well, let's go ahead. We know that the C and the O are going to have to be bonded together. And the H's, hmm, they could either be placed next to the O and the H, or you could draw it with a C and an O, and then the H's around with two H's near the C's or the H next to the oxygen and then one next to the C. Now let's see how what happens with each one of these molecules when we start putting in our Lewis dots. So hydrogens each have one Lewis dot. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six. Carbon has one, two, three, four. This one, car oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six. Carbon has one, two, three, four. Hmm. Well, we can already see that one of these structures is pairing up a lot nicer. So let's look at it and see. Connect the dots. Which structure is the happiest? Well, this one is. Why? This carbon has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. The hydrogen has its duet of two. That formaldehyde molecule, each one of the atoms have its complete octet or duet. It's 
happy. This guy, not very happy at all. This carbon only has two, four, five, six valence electrons. It wants its complete octet. This would be the correct Lewis dot structure for C2, CH2O. All right, so before we move on to polyatomic anions and structures that have either a positive charge or a negative charge, why don't you go ahead and practice and do these formulas, CHCl3, HCN, H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, and then CH2O2, and yes, my daughter needs help too, so uh, write these down, go ahead and practice these, and then on the next tape I'll put the answers up before we go into cations and anions.